All right, this is a moment I've been waiting for for 10 years to be able to unpack this box. Something I have wanted for a long time. And it's finally here. I don't know why it took me so long. I kept on putting it off because of price, but I got a really good deal on a flash lightning sale and I had to make it happen. And I am so excited. It's finally here. Oh my goodness. It's even more spectacular in person. Perfect. I absolutely love it. Thank you, Mark. So this right here is a fermenting crock from Mark Campbell Ceramics. He makes beautiful fermenting crocks, kombucha crocks. This one is a sourdough crock for me to go ahead and get my sourdough starter up and running again. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. I have three different starters. I have a regular commercial sourdough starter that was gifted to me. I have a 300 year old starter from some monks in Italy. And I have a 5,000 year old sourdough starter from the Giza pyramids. So I'm super excited to get them all started up again and show you guys how we do it in our awesome fermenting crock. We are trying to get this mulched area kind of over to there in that lower area, but it's kind of hard because it's really shallow. So every time we stick the shovel in, we end up finding lawn underneath. So we may just leave it and just plant some kind of stuff there. But so far, everything is looking really good. We had some dock that had started coming up in that area where it was more shallow and Ryan had to dig it up. I am gonna try to see what I can do to make some medicine from some of these roots. Yellow dock root is used for all types of different medicinal reasons. So I'm not suggesting it or telling you how to use it. Do the research on your own, but I'm gonna go ahead and um, save these aside for some uses that we might need it for. So we are going through and pulling out all of the cedar so that we can use it for the raised beds and just seeing what we have here and getting it so that it's stored better and it won't be as damaged the next time we go to use some wood. So we're just starting out by matching up pieces of wood and laying out some beds. It doesn't matter if they don't all end up being the same size and the same shape. We're just trying to get some vegetables growing. And sometimes you just have to work with what you have and with lumber prices the way they are, free wood that's in not the best condition and previously used is the best we have <laughs> for anybody that saw our, our cut and come again lettuce garden video this is what we had to do because the chickens <laughs> decided to take a poultry cage and put it upside down on top of them because our silly chickens keep trying to eat it Yes, you. I'm looking at you. This rooster is not going to be around much longer. He is going in the freezer. He has gotten aggressive with the other rooster and has just kind of been a little bit of a pain lately. So we don't want fighting roosters and he will make a wonderful soup. <laughs> <laughs> the chickens have been scratching out underneath the quail pens, getting all the bugs that live under there and making a mess. So we're going to have to shovel out all this area 
because it's all composted manure and now we have to walk in it when we come in here and feed. We are going to be putting our quail roosters in with the hens and getting some <coughs> fertile eggs. See what I mean? He's just, he's a very loud rooster, always crowing. So he is, yeah, he's giving me the side eye right now. <laughs> But we're going to be getting our quail roosters put in with our hens that we want to hatch out from. So over the winter, we reduced our quail flock. So we just kept the best of the best for breeding. And we're going to be starting to hatch those eggs soon and have lots of quail available. And after we're done hatching, <coughs> we're, going to, we're going to also be selling fertile eggs. <laughs> this is an old well house that the chickens have begun laying in and these are some of our quail eggs that were collected today. We try to keep our selenon laying hens in our breeding program because we really like the blue eggs. <laughs> Everybody's lined up for feeding time. They know what time it is, don't you babies? You know it's time to eat. When everybody lines up at the fence. Right? Right, friendship? You want some bread, don't you? She been letting me scratch her because she's shedding. She likes it. Oh, yeah. Plus, we've been giving her some bread. We just got a little bit of bread for treats. I don't like to give them too much because it's not very good for them, but it's okay as a treat. Kind of like for me. I'm not supposed to eat bread, but I like to sometimes for a treat. Even you guys got some food, huh? Did you drink all your water or did you spill it? Oh, we are trying to train them to drink water and we can't seem to get them to do that. And we were giving them alfalfa hay, which they were eating like crazy, but we ran out and we transitioned them to Bermuda and they don't like it, so. Kind of, but they like their grain and they like their milk. I just need them to get to drink water so we can reduce the amount of milk they're getting. Truly, I think you're the only goat who actually is pregnant. <laughs> so you better have does, okay? She's looking wide. So unfortunately, I don't think we have many goats bred because the buck somehow got out of his pen and was in with all of the does the same week that I was going to start selecting which does would go in with him when they were in heat in the fall. And because I didn't know how many of them he had bred, I didn't want to have too many babies. So I said, well, I guess whoever's bred now is who we're going to have babies. And apparently it was only truly because nobody else seems like they're bred at all. But we could be surprised. You never know. Look at the little baby day lily starting to come up. I can't wait. Spring is so wonderful. The Facithia is blooming. It's so pretty. One of the best spring ephemerals there is. Hello. Hello, Miss Piggy. Hello, Miss Piggy's babies. <laughs> they are so loud when they're hungry. Dinner's coming. Daddy's on his way. We're going to be processing one or two of these soon. Probably going to do Miss Piggy because she's the oldest. And we can start breeding these guys pretty soon. Well, not pretty soon. But when they reach maturity, we can breed them. I just think that the mama is ready for retirement and we don't have space on our farm for retired pigs. We definitely have a lot of retired animals, but pigs is something that I feel like it's bar probably better off to go ahead and butcher them. As a lot of you already know, most of our goats are retired now. So we only have a choice few that we do want to continue breeding and just keeping our numbers a little bit smaller than we used to and focusing more on diversity 
on our homestead. All right, so we've got some preliminary ideas on how many beds we're gonna be able to do. This is using just cedar. We could build more beds if we use some of the pressure treated lumber, but I would prefer not to. I will if I have to. For instance, we have these ends picked out that are cedar. And if we run out of small pieces to build ends, I might end up using that pressure treated lumber on the ends. You try to do everything as close to organic and natural as possible. So having chemicals in our garden beds is not something I wanna do. I did find some more untreated pine. So if we run out of the cedar, I will use that first. 